Hi everyone and welcome back to the next video. In this video I'm going to be taking two grocery store cakes and turning them into a wedding cake. So both of these cakes are from a local grocery store and they're both chocolate cakes with vanilla frosting um, but the white cake does have a Bavarian cream in the middle so I thought would add a little more flavor to this grocery store cake. These cakes just came from the store, so they're about room temperature, um, which I thought would make them easier to disassemble, and both cost about $20. Once I got the cakes out of their boxes, I decided to work on the purple cake first, and I thought that would take more time. I first assessed to see if I could save anything I thought I could save the roses. So I'm going to pull the roses off and put them on a sheet pan, and pop those flowers in the freezer until I get to the decoration stage. Next, I decided to pull out the purple frosting to save it for the decoration stage. To do this, I'm just using an offset spatula to kind of scrape just underneath the purple buttercream to remove it from the cake. Sometimes it would lift off pieces of cake like this example here, and because I wanted to use this for the outside layer of the cake for decoration, any cake I had, I made sure I removed. This way, I ensured that all of my purple frosting that I had for my cake was nice and smooth and great for decorating. it's time to scrape off the white buttercream to be left with a bare naked cake. If I were to do this challenge again, I would definitely leave at least the top layer of frosting on because that would have acted as the middle layer of the cake. I would also leave the frosting on because as I mentioned before with purple icing, a lot of the cake was coming off with the frosting, which means I couldn't use this for decoration. I could only use this to fill the cake and to do a crumb coat. Now that my cake has been stripped bare, it's time for me to do the same thing with the white cake. I didn't save any of the frosting for decoration for the white cake, I just put it all in the same bowl. Once I stripped my cakes, I then decided to measure them because as I've learned from watching other people, 9x13 cakes aren't actually 9x13 cakes once they're stripped of frosting. My cakes measured 7x11 inches, which I use these measurements to then create my template for my stacked cake. For my bottom tier, I decided on a square 6.5 inch cake, and for my top tier, I decided on a 4.5 inch round cake. So just use a template here, a parchment, and a circle cutter to cut out my layers. resting in the fridge or freezer, I'm going to work on my frosting. So this is all the white frosting I could save and scrape off the cake, and I'm just going to mix it together to get a nice smooth consistency. As you'll see, there's a lot of cake crumbs in this frosting, um, which I mentioned earlier in the video, which is why I'm not going to use it for decoration, I'm just going to use it to fill and crumb coat my cakes. And now I'm just going to stack my layers and give them a bit of a trim so that way they're both the same size. Now 
Now that they're both the same size, I'm just going to peel them apart and then I'm going to fill the middle and restock them. To make this easier, I'm going to move my sponges onto my turntable. I started out by putting on some buttercream using an offset spatula, but I found that consistency of the buttercream was a little bit too stiff and a little bit too tacky and was pulling the cake up with it and not really wanting to stick. With this, I switched to a piping bag and things went much smoother. I then did the same process with my small tiers. So I stacked my cakes, made sure the circles lined up, and then I'm gonna unstack them and fill my cake. Onto the crumb coat. So for this, I'm just gonna pipe some buttercream along the sides of my cake and then smooth it out with a spatula. This is probably the hardest part of the whole process um, for, for two reasons, really. So one, I have never made a square cake before, and so I knew it was going to take a lot of time to get those edges and corners nice and sharp. But I think really the biggest problem I had was the consistency of the buttercream. I would describe this buttercream as tacky, kind of gooey, really thick, and really hard to spread. And honestly, I kept pulling off pieces of cake as I tried to spread my buttercream. And so I think if I were to do this again, I would have left as much buttercream on the cake as I possibly could to reduce the amount of buttercream I had to add back onto the cake. With my square cake kind of decent, I'm on to my top tier, which honestly, this tier was even worse. As you can see, the frosting was peeling right off and it was not sticking to any of the cake. After making essentially no progress, I decided to pop it in the freezer and just to see if freezing it for half an hour would make a difference, it really didn't. So now it's time to move on to the bottom tier, and here I'm actually covering this tier in American buttercream. So I was very skeptical that the frosting that came off the store-bought cakes would actually be enough. So I did make one batch of buttercream using a, three sticks of butter and about um, eight or so cups of powdered sugar. As you can see, this consistency is much easier to work with so I can cover these cakes a lot quicker. If you are also thinking about turning a store-bought cake into a fancy cake, I highly, highly, highly suggest making your own buttercream because you can control the consistency. I found the store-bought buttercream to be overly tacky and overly thick and really hard to smooth onto the cake as you just saw. With this American buttercream, I made it the consistency that I am used to and I'm confident with, which helped me really get those nice sharp corners and nice flat top. Onto the top tier and boy did this tiny tier need a lot of work. I transferred it to a cake board that was about five and a half inches or so, so I could try to get an even layer of buttercream all around the sides and have a nice straight and non-crooked cake. By now, I'm definitely regretting doing this challenge and at this point, I'm just trying to get it done. I wanted to add a pop of color to my cake, so here I am adding the purple icing that I saved from the beginning to make a watercolor design. I'm doing this by adding dabs of purple and then using my bench scraper to kind of drag it through the white, and I'm just going to keep doing this until I find a consistency and a color scheme that I can live with at this point. In the home stretcher, it's time to stack and pop my flowers on my cake. To add structure, I cut four bubble tea straws and stuck them in my square tier, and I'm just gonna put the small circle tier on top. My cake looked at this point straight enough and good enough, which means I'm going to add my flowers. This is just a $5 bouquet from the same grocery store, and my flowers are prepped uh, with a little bit of cling film to keep them from leaching into the cake. 
I'm using a little bit of buttercream to attach my flowers to my cake and also pushing the stems into the cake for more security. I wanted the center of my cake to be the corner, so I put those flowers in first. And then to create balance, I put flowers on the top left corner and the bottom right corner. I then went and added some gold glitter to really jazz up my cake and I also went back and added those buttercream flowers that I'd saved from the beginning, I just forgot to film it. And here we have the final product. Would I call this a resounding success? No. However, I will call it a win because this was my first ever square cake and I think those corners were pretty dang good. In the end, this cake cost me around $60, so it was $20 each for the cake. $5 for the flowers, about $3 for the straws, and about $6 or $7 for me to make buttercream. So based on all this information, I probably wouldn't do this challenge again. I think I could make a cheaper cake and a better cake if I made it completely from scratch. Here you can see the inside so you can see just how uneven those layers were and how much I really struggled to make this cake look good. And when it came time to eat it, it just tasted like a store-bought cake, which definitely reminds me of my childhood, but I think I can make a better cake now that I have experimented with other cake recipes and found recipes that I really love. But I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below if you think this cake is a cake fail or a cake win. If you like this video, you guys know what to do. And if this video inspires you to try this challenge for yourself, make sure you tag me at Baking and Broadway. And I'll see you guys in the next video.